Hi, my name is Brian Francis, and I'm a professor of ophthalmology at UCLA School of Medicine, Doheny Eye Institute. I'm here at Los Angeles ASCRS Glaucoma Subspecialty Day, and I gave a talk on the use of electrophysiology in glaucoma. And I want to introduce you to the topic with uh, this first slide, where we discuss both transient and steady state pattern ERG. Pattern ERG is what we use for glaucoma detection and progression. And what you can see here is a description of the transient, which is what you're maybe more used to with uh, normal laboratory-based electrophysiology. In transient, you have a first a negative wave of an N35 negative amplitude shift. That is followed by the positive or P50 amplitude shift, and then a larger N95 amplitude. And uh, this is elicited by the pattern stimulus of four per second or less. Now, when you have a fast temporally modulated stimulus of greater than 10 per second, that then elicits a steady state pattern ERG. And that's what you can see on the bottom right part of the slide. And once this steady state response is elicited, you can get information on both the magnitude, uh, like you did in the transient, but also on the phase information and phase shift. Uh, and that uh, is gathered by Fourier decomposition of the PERG signal. So how does this dovetail with office-based electrophysiology by NOVA ERG? So I've shown you a couple examples here uh, of what the printout looks like when you get this on a patient. And first you can see uh, right here we have the magnitude, the magnitude D, and then the mag D mag ratio. And these are all uh, from the steady state pattern ERG rather than the transient uh, PERG. And you can see on the bottom left, this is a normal patient with good magnitude and also excellent phase variability, so very little phase variability, so that the different uh, waveforms are basically superimposable. You can see on the, just to the right of that, you can see a good magnitude response, but they're out of phase, and that is because there is some dysfunction of the retinal ganglion cells, so they don't overlay well. So that will give you a lower or abnormal magnitude D. When you now have the magnitude D to magnitude ratio, that should be about 1.0 in a normal healthy patient. Whereas if you have a, a phase shift like this, you'll have a low mag D to mag ratio. So how does that help us clinically? So I'm giving you just one small example here of a patient. Uh, this is an 84-year-old female with a strong family history of glaucoma. She has high intraocular pressures in the mid-20s and uh, corneal thickness, which is relatively low in the 502 to 504 micron range. And what we saw in this patient, and this patient has a normal optic nerve with a cup disease ratio of 0.4. But because of her risk factors, we elected to go ahead and treat uh, her intraocular pressure and bring that down. And what you can see on the left side here is her initial or pre-treatment pattern ERG. And you can see some abnormalities both in the left eye and the right eye. Uh, now, we elected to treat this patient with SLT, and you can see on the right here, two months later, the IOP has now decreased to 16 in both eyes, and you can see an improvement of the PERG, which shows improvement of the retinal ganglion cell function. So in summary, we use this in, in certain uh, cases. We use it to, to detect progression. We use it to detect reversal of damage in patients that are treated, and we use it to differentiate normal from early glaucoma. Thank you very much. This is Brian Francis signing off from ASCRS.